So I'd like to bring up our our first toast of the evening. It's Sarah's father, Dean. Let's give him a big hand. hear me that's great good evening I'm so glad you're all here this is so awesome I can't get over how beautiful this is I hope you're all staying warm it's kind of chilly out on this side so stay warm back there this is so great we had such a beautiful evening and such a beautiful ceremony we had in San Francisco last week it was really special to uh, get these two off to a good start it was, it was a beautiful time and I'd also, I'd also like to add to what Sarah said. So thank you so much for all the people that helped put this together uh, yesterday, all the friends and family that uh, put lights in, put light bulbs up, and you know, it's, uh, give yourselves a hand. I really appreciate that. I would like, Sarah made me say that I, I couldn't talk more than a couple minutes, so I'm going to try to be as brief as I can. And she said, don't embarrass me, Dad. That is kind of my job to embarrass you. <laughs> Anyways, I've got my glasses on. The first thing I'd like to say to Sarah and Neil is it's about time. Because, <laughs> you know, it's been so obvious to all of us that you guys were made for each other. You really bring out the best in each other, and, and I'm so glad that you found each other, and we wish for you all the happiness and love that comes from such a long, successful, a long and successful marriage. Because there's not nothing more important. Than that. Uh, Barb and I would like to thank all of you for all of your presence here today. Um, you know, your being here just affirms the specialness of this day, and this is a day we're not going to forget. You know, Barb. You know, Barb and I look back on our marriage, and it just means so much. And this is such a special day for all of us. And uh, I thank you for being here, coming from so far away, from for many of you. Um, and we are so lucky to have the Preaks in our lives now, in our extended family. Um, Nish and Nish and Deb, and Nina and Ian and the kids. It's been so great getting to know you. We've uh, we've had a number of get-togethers. We met up at Christmas a couple years ago. We met up uh, this past year up in Portland when they graciously uh, hosted us up at their home in Portland. It was very, very nice. And then, of course, this past week in uh, San Francisco, where our families really melded. It was, uh, it was super, super special to us. Um, and we really look forward to having a lot more of those uh, meetings, especially as uh, we keep trying to get Sarah and Neil off to a good start, and maybe there'll be more family members. <laughs> All right, Neil, you're first. I've got to say a couple words about Neil. <laughs> Neil, we are so proud to officially welcome you to the Ranelli family. <laughs> and we need to alert you to all the traditions and responsibilities that flow from that, that, from that family. You know, we feel a real special connection to our, to our forebearers and to our relatives and feel a real strong connection to their values and to their history. And we've, I'm so glad that some of our extended family are here. They're going to work on indoctrinating you, Neil, into that family lore. Because there's, I was originally going to mention some of the family stuff, but I think I'm going to hold off on that for now. <laughs> well, like left the making and something called a Sousa Deuce. Ice cream orgy. Ice cream orgy. <laughs> On a serious note, uh, Barb and I really want to especially remember our parents who could, obviously they're not here tonight, and, but they would have loved the both of you so much. And they would have loved being here so much. And we'd like to give a special remembrance to Barb's older brothers that passed away this past year, Larry and Ron. Their, um, their absence here today is especially, especially missed. We got to know Neil very well during COVID. <laughs> I'm not sure if all of you know, but uh, Neil and Sarah lived with us for five months in this house. <laughs> How long? 
five months, 30, 23 days. We even went down to Zion National Park and visited when Neil was running, the, running his ultra marathon down there. Oh, yeah. um, but, um, and we, we figured out that Neil really loved our daughter during that period of time. We got to know Neil, we got to know his special spirit. Uh, his adventuresome, loyal qualities that uh, really proved how much he loved Sarah. And, and the thing that really demonstrated the most was the vineyard. I gotta tell you, you know, Sarah's a kind of a country girl at heart. She likes the land and the animals. She's had ducks and chickens and sheep. What else? We had cats, lamb, lamb, <laughs> sheep, moo, moo, and moo, of course. Anyways, uh, through, during the COVID time, Sarah decided that she was going to be a vintner. She wanted to raise uh, and raise grapes. And you know, Sarah's had lots of ideas during her lifetime, many of which never came to fruition. But this this one really did. And Neil got Neil jumped in there wholeheartedly because I don't know if it, many of you have probably looked at our vineyard out there. It's steep. It's hard as a rock. It was absolutely covered with weeds. And Neil and my son Mark were out there with a. Um, with a rototiller going up and down and back and forth. <laughs> and there were weeds to be pulled and there was irrigation system to put in and there was a cover crop that had to be put in and taken out. So I, I figured that if you don't love Sarah after all that, there's, there's a problem. <laughs> One thing I gotta point out, Neil, that the work is not done in the barn. <laughs> My friend Dave Sanderson, I went over to his house a few weeks ago and I felt sick. Because <laughs> he's, got, he's got a bunch of grapes, and I thought, there's a lot of work to be done here. <laughs> so let's check from here on out. Later on during that COVID period of time, I, I noticed that uh, Neil started to sell all our stuff. <laughs> we had these old Texas Instruments computers that he was found in our desk drawers, and before long, he was on the phone. He was in Facebook Marketplace selling all our stuff. <laughs> And then he was going down to the uh, coffee shop to meet the buyers. <laughs> and at first I thought, what's he doing with the cash from all this? But l later on he did apply it to our dining out and to our ice cream fund. So <laughs> we had many trips to Dairy Queen on, on Neil. The other thing that really impressed me with Neil was his making a sandwich. <laughs> You know, Neil would come down, he'd be working on his computer all day, and he'd come down for lunch, and he would get out the bread and the ingredients and the olives and the blah, blah, blah. And, and before long, you know, you spent about 20 minutes making the sandwich. <laughs> I had finished eating and was doing the dishes by the time you sat down. You had to, you had to get the garnish just right and just the pickle just right. And I, and I gotta tell you, Neil, you probably have noticed that Sarah is not that way. <laughs> Sarah's not quite got that attention to detail, but uh, I, I think opposites really can attract. Sarah, you of course have been the apple of our eyes since you were born. Oh! <laughs> Sarah was born in St. Paul, Minnesota, and she was born on December 7th, 12-7, at 12.07 in the morning. She was seven pounds, two ounces, and it was seven below zero outside. <laughs> so, you know, Barbara and I thought all this, uh, in, all this numerology that lined up made us think that she was a charmed person. And I think that's been, been true throughout, throughout your entire life. Um, and Sarah, of course, is smart and assertive when she was a little girl. And she specialized in outsmarting her parents and her teachers. And, and I always remember hearing about her, at her classroom that you know, she couldn't stand to listen to the lecture. It was too boring, too. She already knew all that stuff. So she always had a book going hidden under her desk. And I think you, I heard you from your teachers. You were always reading a book during school. So, and of course, Sarah is beautiful inside and out. I've got to tell a story. Uh, some of you, I've told you the story before. We went, when we moved from St. Paul, Minnesota, out to Oregon, I think Sarah was nine months old. And we did a cross-country trip, and along the way, we stopped at uh, Yellowstone National Park. And we went to Old Faithful Geyser, which you know, blows off every hour. And we got there with Sarah. Barb had Sarah just decked out you know, with a headband and the cute, uh, what kind of, we had some really special clothes for Sarah. 
And, you know, Old Faithful only blows off about once an hour. So there's about 200 people waiting for the geyser to go off. And the second we got there, every eye turned away from where the geyser was over to Sarah. <laughs> and I think when the geyser actually did blow off, nobody noticed. <laughs> At least that's the way it seemed to me. And of course, beauty is, and as they say, you know, beauty is just skin deep, and it's obviously very fleeting. But Sarah inside is just such a great person. She's loyal and smart and beautiful and kind and compassionate. All the stuff that, who wouldn't want to know somebody like that? I've been, so many of your friends and coworkers have come up to me, this, especially yesterday, and tell me how great you were. I didn't say that about you, Neil. <laughs> I've got, to, I've got to get Neil a few rows. I know Chris is going to nail you pretty good, too. And my sister. And your sister. Um, Wait for that. And, um, but, you know, times have not always been great with Sarah. I'm always remembering eighth grade algebra. Al, you know, Sarah was very bright. You know, she had lots of good math scores. Her aptitude was high, but she refused to do algebra. She said, I'm just not going to do algebra, no matter what. And I said, you know, the first thing about doing algebra, I was good at math. You got to sit at a table, open the book, sharp pencil, clean paper, organized. And you would not do that. You said, I will not be organized. It was just too rigid for you back then. I think it was too rigid for you now, too. And I'd be, I'd be curious to hear from our coworkers. I bet you're still that way. <laughs> but I bet if I hear from her coworkers, I bet she's you know, very intuitive and very compassionate uh, in her work. I'm almost done, Sarah. Um, and Sarah has also been known for her humorous, humorous commentary. She's super funny, and she's particularly boisterous about midnight and afterwards. She's known for her late night uh, frivolity. We're all ready to go to bed and she's, she's getting crazy. Even, even as a baby, she would not sleep. We were just talking about that with my wife and my sister, how when she, we brought her home from the hospital, we're expecting a baby to sleep. She would never slept. And my, one of my biggest memories is holding the door shut <laughs> when you were a toddler, because you would not stay in the bed and we had to hold the door trying to, so you wouldn't get out. <laughs> And at age seven, I think you said something that um, it's, it's just not the nature of my harmony. But whatever that means, we, we, thought, we thought it was important. <laughs> it's hard to believe here we are at your wedding now, Sarah, after all the soccer games and basketball games, 4-H lamb fairs, piano lessons, teacher conferences, graduations, you're moved to L.A., you're moved to San Francisco. I guess you finally have grown up. We had some doubts, though. <laughs> Especially when you acquired your dog Moo when you were a sophomore in college. We thought that was a pretty impulsive decision, but there has never been a dog so cared for and so loved. And I know you'll be a great mom one day. You know, mom and I, Barb and I, were so proud of our big girl. You're talented, funny, smart. You're beautiful inside and out. You're a San Francisco girl who is a country girl at heart. We are so happy that you and Neil found each other. And of course, we wish you all the love and happiness going forward. So I'd like to give a toast to Sarah and Neil. Get Sarah's sister Rachel up here. Give her a big hand.
I'm Rachel, Sarah's younger sister, although I'm sure half of you, including my own parents, uh, may have already mistaken me for Sarah at some point tonight. Um, as, many as, as many of you may know, Sarah is six years older than me, and I will never let her forget it. And when I was younger, that six years felt like we were in two completely different universes. She was in college and drinking and having fun with her friends, and I was still obsessed with Hannah Montana. <laughs> um, over the years, Sarah has taken on many roles for me. From sister, to nemesis, to mother, to closet raider, to my best friend and biggest supporter. There are very few decisions in my life that I don't run past Sarah first. She has lifted me up and motivated me through some of my most difficult moments and is always there, ready to offer me the kind of advice and comfort that only an older sister can. Anyone who knows Sarah knows she is truly one of a kind. Sorry. Um, she's one of the funniest people I know, although that is very hard for me to admit. <laughs> um, and she has the biggest heart for everyone around her, but specifically those with four legs. <laughs> everyone knows that Sarah's first real love is her dog, Moo, who, although is not here at the wedding with us tonight, um, she has already had her wedding photo session and has promptly went back to bed. Um, Sarah has somehow convinced our family to have not only one, but two weddings. <laughs> And then to also have one of those weddings at her childhood home, um, likely just so she could have the photo session with Moo. <laughs> but if there is one thing about Sarah, she loves a project. She is someone who makes her dreams a reality, although not always with an end game and plan. But as someone who is very type A, this is something I have and will always admire. Whether it's deciding to bring home an entire flock of ducklings, your months before graduating high school and moving away to college, or starting a vineyard here at my parents' home as a COVID project, again, your months before moving away and going back to San Francisco. <laughs> for Sarah, if there's something she wants, she goes for it and doesn't just do it half-heartedly. With that in mind, Tonight is the culmination of one of Sarah's greatest projects, and that is Neil. <laughs> and while I may be the younger sister, I have developed a protective older sister mentality over the years, especially when it comes to sharing my older sister with someone else. And although I was trying to be tough at first, when Sarah introduced me to this guy named Neil, it didn't take long for me to realize why Sarah just couldn't stop talking about him. From our first night in San Francisco, just the three of us spent drinking excessively at bars all over the city, which ended inevitably in either pizza or pupusas, I don't remember. <laughs> um, Neil fit right in. He is kind and caring, good humored and honestly may give Sarah a run for the money in the funny department. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, in finding Neil, Sarah has found someone who will not only share in her passions and projects, whether he wants to or not, but who will push Sarah to find new ones. If anyone knew Sarah back in high school, um, you will share in my surprise that she now likes to go hiking and even owns her own camping gear. <laughs> and that Neil has her swimming in lakes and trying caviar. <laughs> no matter the situation, Neil is right there with her, supporting her dreams and passions, while probably also making fun of her, um, and forever encouraging her adventurous spirit. Over the years, I've been so fortunate to witness their love for one another grow and see the lives they have created with each other. Their home in San Francisco has become my second home, whether they like it or not. And some of my favorite moments have been spent eating pizza, drinking together, and probably debating some random historical topic, as well as where they're going to live based upon where I get into residency. Uh, Neil has become more and more like family, and I'm so excited to welcome another brother to the Rinelli clan. Sarah, 
We've always talked about how all we want is to find a love like we see, have seen our parents share for each other. They've been happily married for 36 years, and I honestly think that their love for one another only gets stronger each day. They bring out the best in each other and are unwavering in their support of each other. With that as my reference, I see so many similarities in Neil and Sarah's relationship. Their love and support for one another is unconditional, and it's no secret to anyone who has spent any amount of time with them that they make each other so incredibly happy. With Neil by her side, I don't think it's any coincidence that Sarah and I have only grown closer, if possible. <laughs> Uh, Sarah is a happier and more carefree version of herself, again, if that's even possible, when Neil is around. And I know it's very cliche, um, but I truly think that they make each other better. I have seen so much growth in both Neil and Sarah. <laughs> and so much laughter and love. And I think anyone here can agree that there is no better time or place to be than together with Sarah and Neil. So I wish you two all the happiness, and I am so excited and honored to have been a small part of your journey. Cheers. Woo! Look at Neil's side. I need some wine. You need some wine? Can we refresh this glass of wine real quick, please? You got a red over there? Red? Red. red. Oh, He's got red. Red <laughs> help. Hey, we, we weren't finished with that. <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it back. <laughs> All right, so let's bring Neil's best friend Chris up here. I tried to con control my con consumption tonight. <laughs> For the most part, I was successful. Um, first of all, I want to thank the Parikh and the Ranelli family for the beautiful, re beautiful reception. And I want to thank Sarah and Neil for not making us sit through a reception. <laughs> Those suck. Ceremony. <laughs> Ceremony, reception, same shit. <laughs> You guys have always been cutting edge, new age. I hope that we don't have to ever sit through one again. I also want to thank all of you guys for making it out tonight. I know Medford is really hard to get to now. Uh, connecting trips, planes, trains, automobiles. It was hard to get here, and I know that they really appreciate you being here. Stagecoach. <laughs> As an introduction, for those who don't know me, I'm Chris Nance, the most well-spoken of Neil's Nimrod friends. Which, if anybody talked to any of these Nimrods last night, it's no surprise. Our origin story is volatile, as you might expect, if you know Neil or me. Well, we briefly met in the hallowed halls of Arizona State, the Harvard of the Southwest. We certainly didn't like each other, at least initially. He still likes to reference my indiscretions from college. And what was so offensive to him, what was so visceral, simply because I would raise my hand and, and talk in a case study class, which I thought was the point. <laughs> But he didn't find it cool. <laughs> Luckily, we all go through our phases in college. Um, me, my dorkiness. Neil, he was an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Did 
tell is. Damn right. True. We really started our friendship in San Francisco, though. And not many people can remember the exact moment that they met their best friend, but I do. It was telling Neil to get out of the front seat because there was no way I was not shitting, sitting shotgun in Paul Vaughn's Volvo going up to, Mal to Malice Bay. I can still feel the hate that seethed from the back seat. But I didn't care, I was controlling the radio. Our next 12 years though, I cracked that tough exterior that he projects on the world. And just like the chocolate beneath the hard candy of an M&M, He's sweet on the inside. We've been all over the world together, from the jungles of South America to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, surf camps in Nicaragua, camping on the side of an active volcano in a blizzard in a shitty ass tent, eating Guatemalan bologna, and that's all we had. There have been several times that we literally thought we were going to die. <laughs> and there's nobody I would have rather been with than Neil. He's been my travel buddy and my best friend. In preparation for this speech, I did what my favorite actor, Christian Bale, did. Full immersion. <laughs> Neil and I both decided to sign up for a run in an ultra marathon in Zion. And in preparation for that, we decided we were going to rent a house for a month, live together. Sarah came too. So we, we thought we were gonna train every single day. And at the end of the month, it culminated in this run, which we did not train at all. Um, but it was a great time for me to get to know Sarah better, um, get to know Moo better, who's been referenced in every speech, and funny enough, does not show up for the wedding. <laughs> Anybody who has met Sarah will agree with me in saying she's beautiful, sweet, caring, thoughtful. After spending an entire month locked in a cage with Neil and myself, we had tolerant to the list. I can attest to you all that those are not superficial niceties that fall away or disappear behind closed doors, that's, that's really how she is. And I wouldn't have had the opportunity to know that without going and living together. One of the most thoughtful things that anybody has ever done for me, outside of my, my mom, my baby mama, was Sarah. At the end of Neil and Maya's 31 mile ultra marathon, that turned into 40 plus miles because we got lost. <laughs> there was somebody waiting at the end for us with a pepperoni pizza, <laughs> with jalapenos, oh, and beer, and it was Sarah. <laughs> the man that I spent a month with and the man that stands before you today is not the same guy that I met in San Francisco so long ago. And outside of the countless experiences and the people who shape our lives every day, I truly think that the most important driving force to make Neil the man he is today Thoughtful, selfless, rational, is Sarah. And we all know that those are not adjectives that we used to describe Neil with. You two, meet, you two make each other better 
and it's all we can hope for. I'm so happy you both found each other. I love you both so much. I can't leave this speech without giving you guys unsolicited marriage advice. <laughs> With lessons I learned during that run, but I also think they translate to a healthy marriage. One, perseverance. It's not always going to be easy. There's a long road of challenges, tribulations, but know that you both are better, better equipped to meet those challenges as a team. Always try your personal best. Try to be the best person for each other. Admit when you're wrong. Another lesson we didn't listen to, which is why we spent another 10, 10 miles uh, <laughs> running, running off God knows where. And Neil, I'm looking to you, buddy. Make sure you focus on solutions instead of winning arguments. Pain tolerance. <laughs> a very long run is not about ability or capability. It's about pain tolerance, which I think is similar to marriage. And this is the last lesson that I have. It's number five on my list. It's a stretch but I had to work it in. It's a recent one that I found out. It's the importance of aerodynamics. Many elite runners will shave or wax the hair off their bodies. And I recently found out that Sarah waxes Neil's back for him. Seriously, but seriously, guys. She likes it. It's it's smooth as hell, and I've seen it. But seriously, guys, I love you both. I feel privileged to have spent time with you guys. I feel privileged to watch you grow, to watch your love blossom. I love you both. In a world full of mediocre people, you guys stand out. <laughs> A toast to these two wonderful people who we all love so much. of the evening is Neil's sister Nina. Give him a big hand. You can stand over there. Yeah. Okay, the whole family's here. Great. Um, 
Okay, first I want to take a moment to thank Barb and Dean for hosting this beautiful reception today. What a lovely space this is. We are so thankful. Thank you for inviting us all here um, and hosting this reception. Um, and hi everyone, I'm Nina. I'm Neil's sister, in case you didn't notice our striking resemblance to one another. Um, fun fact, we used to switch IDs to get into bars in San Francisco. And no one ever noticed. We were both over 21, so we didn't have to do it, but we wanted to see. Um, as Neil's bossy older sister, I let him uh, know that I would be roasting him. I'm sorry, I mean, um, giving a speech at your wedding today. And I was honored when he said, okay. Uh, for those of us who have known Neil for a long time, we have seen him through some interesting phases in life, okay? Like his phase where he refused to drink hot liquids of any kind, any kind or when he hated watching movies of any kind, or that time he wanted to make growing almonds illegal. Put it on the ballot, put it on the ballot. One, one phase in Neil's life I'd like to highlight was his phase of pet ownership. Growing up, Neil shared his room with two birds, which, was kind of forced on him by my dad. Sorry, dad, but it's true. Um, they were parakeets that I don't think Neil ever named, possibly to make it easier to hate them. Okay. One phase in Neil's life, I, um, oh, sorry. So our entire house would wake up in the morning to the birds chirping loudly in his room and Neil throwing a pillow at the cage to politely remind them that he was a moody teenager in need of sleep. Um, I don't think those birds lived very long. Like that's a lot of trauma for two little birds. And we buried those birds in our yard under the stone bench in a shoebox. And Neil, I don't remember you saying anything at the funeral. <laughs> Um, there was also the hermit crab that Neil had in his fish tank that I insisted would be able to get out of the tank by climbing out of the hole in the top where the tube went through, but my dad and Neil were like, uh, it's not possible. Okay, turns out I scraped that crab off the bottom of my shoe in my room not a week later. Um, but the final straw with animals <laughs> was the fateful day when our family dog, Rusty, Eight Neil's last slice of pepperoni pizza. The pizza. Rusty, may he rest in peace, had committed the most atrocious offense, okay? Worse than the time he ate all of Neil's Halloween candy that Neil left easily accessible on the floor, and my mom had to spend the entire night shoving a turkey baster down Rusty's throat to save his life from chocolate overdose. Our entire bathroom floor was covered in Sour Patch Kids, dog vomit, and mambas. Some, and some almond joys, and some were still fully wrapped, okay? Um, now, I'm not saying Neil contributed to the death of these family pets. <laughs> But I'm also not not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Sarah, a vegetarian, <laughs> loves animals, grew up singing her chickadees to sleep, so I'm told. She was a 4-H champion, raising prize-winning lambs, and I've seen the rhinestone encrusted belt buckles that prove it. Really impressive. Woo! A loving pet owner to her dog, Moo. So while Sarah's shelves are full of trophies celebrating her love of, and caretaking of animals, 
Our yard is full of shallow graves of the animals that Neil once cared for. However, surprisingly, um, Neil does have incredible capacity for love and caretaking. It just only applies to beat up vehicles that have failed the DEQ. Now, I know you're not supposed to reference previous loves at a wedding, but before Sarah, Neil had only eyes for one lady, Big Blue. She's a 1995 Buick that until very recently was his and subsequently Sarah's main mode of transportation around San Francisco. The car was an absolute beast. It was like driving a boat. It would roll backwards down the big hills in San Francisco, giving many other cars like love taps along the way. And Big Blue had many fun features, like it could only play one Chinese radio station, <laughs> had only one operating door, and sometimes the, sometimes the doors would like lock and you would just get like stuck in it. So fun. It also hosted several unwelcome overnight visitors, and Neil was totally fine with it, even though Sarah was not, um, because he loved the car. And he loved it when he had to jump the car every single time to start it. For a short time, we were lucky enough to host Big Blue in our, at our new home. It was parked outside, Neil had left it there for our care for a few months. And we met many of our new neighbors through that car. Them asking us if the car was abandoned and if, if we need to call the city of Portland to tow it. Um, but luckily, Neil rescued it and brought it back to live with him in San Francisco. You're welcome. Um, now, Neil may lack sound judgment about automobiles, have questionable pet caretaking abilities, but he has never once wavered in his deep, undying, and everlasting love for pizza. <laughs> In his own wedding vows to Sarah last week, he told her that he would, quote, maybe let her eat some leftover pizza crust. <laughs> so generous, Neil. Um, there are many different love languages. There are many different love languages, but Neil's is definitely topped with mozzarella. <laughs> One of the first times I ever met Sarah involved pizza. And it was actually five years ago to the day. I don't know if you guys know this, but Google reminded me. It was September 30th, 2018. Ooh. Wild. Um, and Neil wanted to introduce, introduce me and my husband Ian to Sarah. So we came over for, for, to his place um, at Turk and prepped ve veggies with Sarah and loved getting to know you in the process. Um, and Neil had made the dough from scratch and things started going downhill very quickly from there. <laughs> The dough was stretched way too thin and there was a hole in it and then it was sticking to the counter. And in the final act, Ian and I watched in horror as Neil attempted to transfer this Frankenstein pizza to the pizza stone on the barbecue and it folded on itself. All of the toppings fell into the barbecue and the rest remained in a soggy, doughy lump on the stone. <laughs> Now, for those of you who know Neil, you can imagine what a disaster this could have been. I was about to call Domino's, as I had done many times before, but I stopped myself as I saw Sarah comfort Neil, offer words of encouragement and ways that he could troubleshoot, and ultimately we had a really lovely and memorable evening. We ate our partially cooked calzones <laughs> and left that night thinking, Sarah and Neil were really good for one another. And also kind of wondering, like, can you get salmonella from raw dough? <laughs> um, you know, writing this speech made me think of all the times Neil and I have had together as adults, and there are a lot. Some of my favorites were all of the Thanksgivings we've spent together, um, and, or we call with friends, and we call them Friendsgivings across the country. 
So there was the New York City Friendsgiving where we had like 15 people in a 400 square foot apartment in Manhattan. That was wild. Um, Boston Friendsgiving where we played kickball too long with whiskeys in hand and like totally forgot about the turkey and had Thanksgiving dinner at 11 p.m. There was a Rhode Island Thanksgiving where we somehow crashed a middle school reunion party and pretended like we knew everybody there. Uh, there were also a few Friendsgivings in San Francisco that Neil hosted and one special Thanksgiving in Arizona that was just me and Neil um, where we hiked some trails in the Grand Canyon and of course for our Thanksgiving dinner that year, the two of us cooked pizza. <laughs> I also love the time that we worked together in San Francisco, just a few buildings away from one another downtown. We would meet up during lunch and go to our favorite Indian restaurant. And when I was pregnant, Neil would take me on pregnant lady walks during my lunch breaks. Once we went to, um, to the beach in Goa, India together, and I watched as Neil was swindled by both an earwax cleaning con man <laughs> and bongo drum salesman in the time it took me to get one massage on the beach. <laughs> he was so proud of that bongo drum that he brought it as his only carry-on on the flight home. And it made it even more meaningful when Neil gave that drum to our son, solidifying his title as fun uncle. Both, <laughs> both of our kids think Neil is one of the coolest people in the world. <laughs> they call him Kaka Neil. Um, and Neil wasn't super happy to find out that Kaka was his official Indian uncle title since he was more familiar with the meaning of Kaka in Spanish. <laughs> Not surprisingly, this made me like the title even more. So the name stays. For all of the special childhood memories, um, the adult conversations and pregnant lady walks, thank you for your kindness, for your um, presence in a conversation. You're one of the best listeners I know, and I really admire that about you. Sarah, you are so kind, generous, and somehow calm during the chaos that my family is so good at creating. <laughs> You're also totally down for some of the silly shenanigans we get up to, like the time we barely knew you, but you dressed up with us as the Rajanishis for Halloween, <laughs> and Neil was Osho. I feel so lucky to call you as a sister and to welcome you to our family, unfortunately with the title of Kaki Sarah. <laughs> I love you both so much. I couldn't be happier for you. And um, cheers to Sarah and Neil. Woo! <laughs>